If you're curious how you can use a text contains function, but then input multiple items, then this video is for you. In this video, I will show you multiple ways on how you can make sure that your value contains like a partial string and that you can actually input a whole list of those to make things easy for you. Okay, stay tuned. The screen we're now looking at is what we ended at on our previous video. And in the previous video, I show how you can do an exact match and simply input an entire list to check with. So you can have a list like we have up here and check whether one of the items in the full name list is equal to one of those. And as we said, the downside here is Carl Dunn is the first one here. If I would remove the first part and say, I'm looking for Carl, I'm looking for Miss Pearson, I'm looking for Chan and Weaver, you will see that this formula doesn't work anymore. Let me show you a way on how you can make this work as well. We will create a custom function here, a custom formula, and we're going to use something that is split, split text by, and then you get a whole list of options here, but we're gonna split the text by any delimiter, which is the first one. Then we open our brackets here, and now what we're gonna do is we're going to provide a list of items where, that we wanna look for. So we're gonna have a splitter, split text by any delimiter and actually input all the names that we had right there. So we can go, uh, we have Carl, then we have Amir, we have Adrian, and we have Carlos. Sure. Uh, then we close our curly bracket because this was a list and we close our parentheses. If you now press OK, you'll see that this is a function because by itself, it doesn't return you the right result. But this is the first step that you'll do. You just need to make a slight adjustment, which is after closing these brackets, you can open another bracket, and then you're just inputting the column name within the square brackets, so, you, so the function knows where to apply it on. And you close your regular bracket, press OK. Now, what's happening here is it's transforming the items that we have here, is splitting the text by each of the items that it finds here in the list. So on the first one here, Wallace is a single item, so nothing has been split. But we know for the second item, we have Carl in our search criteria, that there is now two items. Carl has been split and removed, and there's two items now here. Denton wasn't part of it, but Amir is part of it. So this is the first step. What you can then do is because this creates a list, we can do a list count of this. And the list count formula simply counts the amount of items that are in the list here. And as you can see, the result right here shows you a single value if it's not been found. But if it's able to split your first column by one of our keywords in our list, it will return a two here. And this is helpful because now we can use this and we can just add our conditional formula, just like with the other items. So we could say, if the list count is bigger than one, then we wanna return an A. And if that's not the case, we're gonna return just a bunch of Bs like before. And we'll call this one splitter split text, just to be sure. And if we press OK here, you're going to find that these are the actual values that you're looking for. So in fact, what you've done is the text contains formula, you have replicated this. And why have I replicated this? Let me still show you that. Because there is a built-in function, which is text contains, and it needs your full name first. And then it can look for all the items that we're looking for. So we're looking for Carl. And in this case, the curl line says true. But if you would want to put like the multiple items here, then it's not possible for us to create a list and put it in here. So here's curl. And we could, for example, see if we can add uh, Amir in here too. Close our list item. And you'll find that this doesn't work and creates an error. So we just replicated a way and how we can do that text contains part. Now this was method one. There is another way if you find this one difficult. And the other one that I'm talking about, it's not an easy one either, but it works like this. 
let, let me first copy the code that we had here earlier. That saves us some time. So you create a custom column and we're going to use a function that's called list transform. The list that we want to transform is the list that we're looking for. As a next argument, we're going to write something in between uh, parentheses, substring, and we're going to make the substring come back in the text contains function, just like we did earlier, text contains. Then we're going to look into the full name here. And for each of these items here, each of the substrings, it will need to look for that. So we can write substring here, close our bracket, close our bracket. Let's call this column list transform. Press OK. So the first one shouldn't match at all. So if we click on the list that has been created, we see that it's been checking and none of these items is true. The second item here has one true item in there. And that's the first item. So Carl, when you do your text contains function, it actually finds that on this row, Carl is true. And on this row, the second item is true, which is Amir. So this is a good start. And again, what you could do here is either you could go for like, uh, let's go back to the function here. And there is a function that is called list dot any true. And the list dot any true function looks into the list that you provide. So the code that we had here was a list that we provided. And from the code that we provide, it's checking if any of those in the list has a true value. Now, if we press OK, you'll find that also these items here return true on the right part. And then the last step to replicate exactly what we did earlier would be to wrap this in an if. This part that we just checked is true, then return as an A, else return as a bunch of Bs like earlier. And exactly just like that, we have replicated a text contains function, but then for multiple items in your input. Okay, thanks for watching guys. Those were two methods in which you can replicate the text contains function with multiple items to check for. Was that difficult? Do you know another way? Please let me know in the comments below because I love just finding different ways on how to approach the problem solving here. Also, if you're new to the channel or if this was valuable, a like really helps my channel. So please like my video and I hope to see you in the next one.